Big tonight, the Essequibo conflict was high on the agenda for a United Nations security meeting Friday, as well as virtual meeting of the Caribbean leaders. That is our lead story for tonight. The United Nations Security Council took no immediate action at a closed emergency meeting late Friday requested by Guyana after Venezuela's referendum claiming the vast oil and mineral-rich Essequibo region that makes up a large part of its neighbor. But diplomats said the widespread view of the 15 council members was that the international law must be respected, including the UN Charter's requirement that all member nations respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of every other nation, and for the parties to respect the International Court of Justice's orders and its role as an arbiter. A possible press statement was circulated to council members and some said they needed to check with capitals, the diplomats said, speaking on condition of anonymity because the consultations were private. In the case of the virtual meeting of CARICOM heads of government, CARICOM issued a statement saying they firmly support Guyana in pursuance of the resolution of its border controversy with Venezuela through the process of the International Court of Justice. The regional leaders urged Venezuela to respect the conservatory measures determined by the ICJ in its recent ruling until a final resolution. CARICOM also called for a de-escalation of the conflict and for appropriate dialogue between the leaders of Venezuela and Guyana to ensure peaceful coexistence, the application and respect for international law, and the avoidance of the use or threats of force. South American countries on Thursday urged Venezuela and Guyana to seek a peaceful solution to the territorial dispute over the Essequibo region, warning the nations to avoid unilateral actions in the conflict. Members of the Mercosur trade bloc expressed their deep concern at the rise in tensions between the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and the Cooperative Republic of Guyana said a joint statement from the bloc's member countries, Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay. Non-Mercosur members, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru also signed the statement. The countries urged both parties to engage in dialogue and seek a peaceful solution to the dispute in order to avoid unilateral actions and initiatives that could aggravate it. Back in Georgetown, it was a somber evening Friday when the remains of the five soldiers who died in the helicopter crash near the Venezuelan border were returned. President Irfan Ali, Prime Minister Mark Phillips, military leaders and family members were on hand for the arrival. The bodies returned were those of Lieutenant Colonel Michael Charles, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Shahoud, retired Brigadier Gary Beaton, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Welcome and Sergeant Jason Khan. The Chief of Staff of the Guyana Defense Force said the investigation into the incident is fully underway. Good evening, sir. Is there anything you can tell us uh, on the investigations so far? Um, not as yet, but I'm sure we're going to pronounce on that soon. And it has to do with also the involvement of the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority. So we'll have some word on that soon. Thank you. Have a good evening. Have you commented whether there was pilot error? Have you heard that? It's an investigation to be conducted. I don't know. We don't know. Once that's completed. Thank you. Thank you. Earlier on, Lieutenant Andrew Crawford and Corporal Dwayne Jackson, the two soldiers who survived Wednesday's helicopter accident, were extracted from the crash site and were flown back to, Ga to Georgetown. The two survivors were among seven soldiers on board the Bell 402 Army helicopter that crashed on Wednesday. The chaplain of the Guyana Defense Force spoke to the Guyana news source. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, hey, what's up? Must be a tough time for you and the Guyana Defense Force. Oh, definitely, definitely. The, the nation mourns with the country. We, we mourn with the families and the community of the world that uh, we've lost these, these valiant um, and highly distinguished service members. Certainly, yes, it is very difficult. You had a chance to go out there and see the two survivors and meet with them. Uh, what word did you impart with them as a chaplain of this force? Actually, I was, I was observing and just supporting the family members. We offered a prayer for them. And um, we have some other pastors who did the same. 
and I believe that this is the most important part at this juncture to give them support at this time. I, I, I spoke with the um, one of the survivors, and you know, th this is this is something that we are still trying to wrap our minds around. And of course, uh, the members of the GDF mm -hmm. who are still out there in those bordering locations, who are still serving, mm -hmm. very trying time for the force. You must be saying some special prayers for them. We are we are praying. We are going around. Um, we, we we are ensuring that the family members that we are in touch with receive not only spiritual support but psychological support. And um, as a chaplain, I am working hard to ensure that we make sure the spiritual life and faith stays very relevant because it's one of those things that we somehow um, miss when these situations happen. We get caught up in the emotions, but um, we are working assiduously to ensure that all the members of the force, not only those who are, um, ex ex are experiencing this tragedy, but those who have not experienced it, stay um, focused. This is Primetime Caribbean.